A wonderful day to you viewers, welcome to another edition of the Complete Sports Update. I am Abib Kuranga. This is the show where the latest and trending stories in the world of sports are brought to you. Uh, for today's episode, I'm being joined alongside uh, James Agberby and together we shall be taking you through the rounds as far as proceedings in today's episode is uh, concerned. Uh, welcome to the show, James. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, it's always uh, good to be back on the Complete Sports Update and uh, how was the weekend, uh, you know, footballing wise? Yeah, it was good. Um, my team has now, they were able to at least get out a point from Chelsea, despite the fact that they, they, they didn't really go into the game with full, you know, flow and everything. But I mean, the draw was good for both sides. They almost nicked it at the end, but... Mm. They just couldn't do it, but it was a fair result. Yeah, it was a fair result, even though us now are now are nine points behind uh, Liverpool. But uh, that's uh, by the way. So let's uh, move to uh, let's talk about uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria as they are built to play the remainder of their matches in the 2025 Africa Cup of Nations uh, qualifiers against the uh, Benin Republic and uh, Rwanda. And uh, you know they just need a point. Mm -hmm. You know, ten points already in the bag. Just need a point to you know to qualify to the pro tournament uh, proper. So what are your thoughts about? About uh, the game against uh, the Cheetahs and also against the Waps of uh, Rwanda. Well, uh, for me, I think the game against the uh, um, Republic is going to be a tighter uh, contest because you uh, remember the last time they met in Abidjan there, um, the Benedictines came from two goals. They uh, go down to to defeat the Super Eagles in the World Cup qualifiers. You know, so I mean, uh, I think that will be at the back of your mind of the Super Eagles players because. That's the ground the Benin have been playing their games because they cannot use uh, start the Lamite in uh, at home because yeah. you know it wasn't past fit. So they had to start using the uh, Felix and Free Boyne Stadium in Abidjan. Mm -hmm. So um so two things involved for me there. The Benin have banking on the fact that they were able to get a victory the last time they made the Spigus right there, just the white Spigus want to do there and um, you know avenge that defeat, you know. So I think prove a point. But the good thing they did go into that uh, game not under pressure because the point is enough for them. And the last the last time they met uh the three new victory for them and in the old Tansu Stadium. So um I, like I said it's gonna be a tight one. It, a, a feisty one because uh, we have a, the former square who still cannot draw who want to do everything possible to make sure his team qualify for the AFCON. You know, so let's see what happens. Uh, but I, I want to tilt to the Super Eagles. It's going to be a tight one, but I think um, they might just edge it by the outcome, maybe one game or two. Okay, so you are actually uh, tipping Nigeria to win exactly. the game against yeah. Agnes Rose outside. Yeah. So now let's talk about our two important uh, players of the Super Eagles, uh, Victor Osime mm -hmm. and uh, Ademola Lukmon. Uh, Osime already backed um, uh, 8 goals and uh, 4 assists in yeah. 9 uh, matches while uh, uh, Ademola Lukman already on 8 goals and 5 assists in 14 uh, right. matches. You know, you could say you, you, that these uh, guys are actually one of the best players on the, con mm -hmm. uh, on the continent at the moment. So, you know, uh, how can uh, Osime Guagun actually put these guys into use, most especially the game away against Benin Republic, knowing fully well that the last time they played under uh, Affinity George, it was you know two one uh, uh, defeat to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. So how how do you think uh, Coach Austin Ekwabon can actually you know uh, galvanize these two players in order to bring up a uh, results against uh, the Titans? Well, the thing is, um, it's not as if these are two strange bedfellows. They've played together before. We also what they did at the Afcon. They complemented um, each other very well at the last Afcon in Cote d'Ivoire. So putting them together on the same pitch it shouldn't be a problem. The good thing is, they, I think they can they can switch. Uh, they, they are not that, that kind of players, uh, four players who just stay put in a particular uh, position. They, they tend to you know switch. So maybe fine, it's, it's, it's an out and out striker, but it's that kind of striker that can move around and you can you can go to the right, to the left, or even come drop deep, drop deep. Yeah. You know, the Lukman too can even play at the first line. You know, so they have the, the, those killer instincts. They can score goals. So this is the kind of edic that as a coach you want to have. Yeah, definitely. Know? Exactly. You have this kind of player that can guarantee you goals, you know. So it means the last um, the qualifiers against Libya. Well, so this time around, he's coming in to you know, show that he's still I mean, he's not going to give up his uh, African for of the year award just like that. He's still going to put in the effort to so at least you know that um, um, fine, he wasn't nominated, but at least he, he, he's going to show that it wasn't the flash in the pan when he won the last uh, Award. So, like I said, um, the Eagles have what they, the attack is sharp. They have the quality players there. 
So let's just hope that they will come with their because they've been firing a lot in that. Yeah. So Fimes last time scored the brace, the back to back brace. Ademola look more to if he's not scoring to assist him. Yeah. So for me it's it's a good it's like I said it's a good headache for a coach to have and then let, let, let's see how things pans out. But like I said, I still tip the Super Eagles to just edge this one. Yeah, definitely, we do hope uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will actually claim uh, the maximum points uh, against uh, Benin uh, Republic. So, uh, you know, over to Europe, mm. uh, you know, we have to talk about Manchester City and their yeah. uh, crisis, you know, their current form. You know, they have actually played, their last four matches have actually ended in defeats, yeah. you know, starting with the game against uh, Tottenham Moscow, mm. then the game against uh, Bournemouth, uh, Bon then the Champions League game against Sporting as yeah. well, as the league game against uh, Brighton and both uh, Albion, mm. you know, Pep Guardiola said the first time he will ever lose uh, four consecutive yeah. matches, and uh, you know, the first time uh, Manchester City have also lost, you know, four consecutive matches since 2008 under uh, Nigel, um, uh, Paulson, you know, you know these are uh, you know squad. Uh, this team, current crop of players, they are not used to losing. So, do you think you know this current form of theirs is somewhat of a somewhat of a crisis? Well, um, I think you want to cut them some slacks because some of their key players are they are, they are out injured. Somebody like um, uh, Rodri is out almost out of the season. Stone, John Stones have not been firing this season. Just in and out. Even uh, Kevin De Bruyne has not really done much. It's one injury to another, you know. So um, even the last game, I think uh, one of them didn't play, if I'm not mistaken. So injuries and I, I I won't say it's a crisis yet because it's Manchester City. Yeah, I think that they can turn. They just need. I think they just need just one victory to turn things around, you know. Because it's this is the first time that this kind of thing will happen. Uh, uh, for Guardiola, that yeah. used four consecutive games. I mean, that's why people are really saying, "I uh, this is a crisis." For me, it's not. It's not a crisis yet. Yeah. You know, it has never happened before. There's always a first time for everything. Yeah, but, <clears throat> so I think the good thing there again is uh, the international break is coming at the right time for them. So it just left for the players to just sit back. Those that are not going for international assignment. Just. Relax and uh, those that are injured, you have the opportunity to recover on time. Yeah. You know, so just everybody go back and like, yeah, they are, they are taking a break. You know, so by the time they come back, I think you know uh, that's why I don't want to rule them out yet. What the gap between them and uh, uh, Liverpool Five is not that. So I mean, they've they've clawed back more than eight, nine points. Yeah. So so what's the difference between them? They, they just need to put a couple of runs before. Do you know that it's Manchester City? Something yes. that they can do. So that's why, that's why I said I'm not going to rule them out. They are not. For me, yet they are because the kind of manager they have, the kind of players they have, the experience. I'm not going to say they are in crisis for now. I don't want to be that. Yeah. So, so let's move to the uh, other side of Manchester, the red part of uh, yeah. Manchester, where Ruben Amori uh, begins his uh, reign as Manchester United uh, manager mm-hmm. after the sacking of uh, Eric Ten Hag. He becomes the uh, sixth permanent manager after the uh, following the retirement of uh, Sir Alex uh, Ferguson and you know with his age 39 years old people are actually you know Manchester United supporters are actually having the belief that he's going to bring back the glory days of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson even though we had the likes of Luis Van Gaal, uh, uh, Jose Mourinho, you know Eric Ten Hag, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well as uh, David Moyes who came and they didn't really hit uh, the heights of uh, hype that they were placed in. So what do you have to say about the appointment of Ruben Amore? Well, I'll uh, just uh, look at it with less expectations. But this was the same thing we were all saying when Eric Ten Hag came in. You know, when he was with uh, Ajax, he did some big feats. He defeated the likes of uh, Real Madrid, Juventus, and the Champions League. Yes. You know, so when he came in, people were like, "Wow!" But we all, you know, things just went south for him. You know, so I'm not going to sit down here and say, "Oh, I'm him," because he defeated. Remember, he defeated uh, Pep Guardiola four one. Oh. You know, so that's. That's Sporting Lisbon. Sporting Lisbon is not Manchester United. Manchester United is a very big institution. Yeah. You know, you as a manager, I mean, the, the expectation, the pressure, everything is on you. The moment you don't hit the ground running, it becomes a problem. You know, you start in the media and everybody start coming on you. You know, so coaches who are bigger than I am already, they've been there. They, I'm not saying he's not, he, he cannot come in and do something. You know, he's not a bad manager, but let's just wait and see the first few games, how it could, because, I mean, the heat, the pressure, the and the tension, everything will start from day one. You know, so I just hope you're able to to just I mean do something because 
and the Manchester United is it's no main fee. That's that's an institution that yeah. that's space in your hand. So I mean, sporting this, but I mean the gap is, is too much. So he yeah. you knows the kind of what he's working into. So, so let your I just hope you be able to, to do something. Yeah, definitely. Is uh, Ruben Amorim the man to bring back the glory days? Uh, to you know, do glory days back to Old Trafford. Well, we never can tell. Maybe the theater of nightmare that it is <laughs> called uh, right now will, will eventually return back to the theater uh, okay. of our dreams. Uh, thank you very much for your great analysis as always on Complete Sports Update. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. so viewers, this is where we're wrapping things up as far as proceedings is concerned. Do take care of yourselves and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.